Welcome to today's training. Uh, this training is for runaway and homeless youth programs that serve youth under the RHY data elements. So RHY data collection um, is for RHY grantees specifically, and they collect data on a semi-annual basis, and they're categorized by two different data elements. One are the universal data elements for all HUD or homeless programs, and then RHY has some very program-specific data elements that we'll cover in today's training. RHY program data elements are from FISB to capture critical information about employment and educational status, critical issues, services, outcomes that are unique primarily to accompanied youth that's, that are served within the, the RHY programs. The newest component to the RHY data collection is through the YHDP grants, the Youth Homelessness Demonstration Project uh, grants and services. Those data, some of the data elements covered in today's training are also located within those project types. Component types versus project types. So you might be funded under a specific program component through RHY funding. There, however, there is also an HMIS project type that you are assigned that you're going to follow in regards to data elements for the universal data element portion. Street Outreach program is a street outreach project type in the HMIS. If you're a basic center program prevention uh, component, you're going to follow the homelessness prevention data elements and data collection. If you're basic center program emergency shelter or host home shelter, you'll follow the emergency shelter data collection elements, um, transitional living program, maternity group home, and the demonstration grant through YHDP, you'll follow the transitional housing data collection points. The project entry dates could be different based upon the different Funding, uh, funding streams and or component types for basic center for shelter. Your project start date is going to be the night the client first stayed in your shelter. For prevention, it will be the project start date. Um, project start date will be the date the client first receives out of shelter services. For transitional maternity group home and dem demonstration projects with residential components, the project start date is the date the first the resident stays their first night in the project. Street outreach projects, the project start date is the date of the first contact with the client, regardless of how much data you collected within that first contact. Exit date information and exit date for uh, basic center program emergency shelters would represent the last day that they continuously stayed within your project. For transitional maternity group homes or the demonstration projects, the exit date would represent the last day of continuous stay in the project. For homelessness prevention, the exit date should represent the last day of service that was provided to the client directly. For street outreach projects, the exit date would be the last, or would be the date in which the street outreach worker was able to transfer the case to another youth provider, like a shelter provider, transitional and permanent housing, or if the client no longer needs um, the services. Referral sources are tracked within the RHY providers. Refer referral source is a data element within the entry assessment. It indicates the person, place, or organization that referred the youth to your specific project type. There's only one referral source that uh, will closely match the use answer, so you're going to use that answer, and it's only collected for the head of household. RHY basic center status. This is a data element also that's located within the entry assessment. It serves three purposes. It enables the emergency shelter to record a youth that is not eligible under FISB RHY program and collection information um, upon reporting to the RHY and federal to, for the federal transfer. RHY is then able to remove these youth within the RHY repository for the federal reports. Um, it allows the facilitation for the local COC and HMIS to utilize participation under basic center program as a part of their point in time count and other data elements that are with, located within HMIS. 
and it identifies the number of runaway and homeless youth located within your COC. The RHY Basic Center program status occurs on the date when eligibility for the runaway and homeless youth services has been determined. Determination definitions, um, if uh, the determination is out of range, it refers to a youth who have reached the age of 18 and are thereby ineligible for basic center program shelter under RHY programs. If they're a ward of the state, it pertains to a youth who are currently the responsibility of a child welfare or foster care system. So if they enter that system, if they're criminal justice, if they're awarded the criminal justice system, if they're under court order or at a residential juvenile facility, and there is an other category for youth who are not eligible for reasons that are not covered by the first three. One data element that's unique to RHY programs is sexual orientation that's collected upon entry. The purpose is to identify the sexual orientation of all head of households and adults served in RHY programs. There are specific data elements that um, have been identified as a sexual orientation. It's important to note that this measure will be updated if a youth discloses the information at a later time. So if a youth doesn't identify or doesn't disclose their sexual orientation on entry, you can collect it at a later date through an update or interim assessment. If a youth identifies as pansexual or asexual or any other option that's not listed in the drop-down box, you can, you can select other and then describe the other in a separate text response within the HMIS assessment. Last grade completed uh, is a data element also located within the entry assessment. The purpose of this is really to identify the educational attainment of youth who are in RHY projects and measure changes in that educational status from project start to exit for head of households and youth. You choose one response category describing the last grade level they completed by the client at the time of the project start. That project entry or exit, you can indicate the last grade that's completed by the client as of the date of exit. School status. Um, these are all of the listed school statuses within HMIS for data elements, attending school regularly, attending school irregularly, graduated high school, obtained GED, dropped out, suspended, expelled, and client doesn't know. There's definitions to all of these statuses so you can help determine what's the best answer for each individual youth you're serving. Employment status is the purpose. The purpose is to assess a client's employment and need for employment services and measure changes throughout the client's time in your service from start to exit. You enter the date the information was collected by the client or from the client and which of the information is relevant. The information date is the date that the information was collected from the client, regardless of when you're putting it in the system. Employment status categories and definitions. Employment status is full-time, part-time, seasonal or sporadic. So this is day labor, or if maybe they just work during the winter times, um, so if it's seasonal or sporadic, you would choose that looking for work, unable to work, or not looking for work. And there's very detailed definitions for what those categories entail. Health status is something that's collected throughout a client's time and the program. There's three categories to answer these questions, general health, dental health, and mental health. It's used as a first step to identify where they are in these different health services and what they may need throughout their time in your project. There's a scale of one to five where one is excellent and five is poor. Pregnancy status is collected throughout a client's time in your program. The purpose is really to determine the number of um, individuals, women who are starting the project while pregnant or who have become project or pregnant while in the project. If the expected due date is known, you will put the due date within HMIS as well. If it's unknown, they're encouraged to record as much of the date as, as is known. So default to January for the first date of the month and the current year for anyone who doesn't know their due date. If a youth becomes pregnant during the project, say, please update the information 
and record the pregnancy data within an interim review. Formally award of child welfare and foster care. It's really to identify clients who were engaged or have been engaged within these systems. It's collected upon client entry. The data elements within this are the number of years, if they have been award, and if it's less than one year, the number of months. The same for formally award of the juvenile justice system. It's really the purpose to identify any youth that's been involved and engaged with the juvenile justice system. And then if so, the number of years and or the number of months. Family critical issues is required as well. The purpose is to identify specific family issues faced by the youth in the RHY programs that have contributed to the youth's homelessness or as a factor in family reunification. Family reunification is the ultimate goal for all runaway and homeless youth who are served within this system. You should choose the appropriate response categories to identify family issues as identified by staff and the young person for each head of household and adult. These issues should be those of other family members in the household, the youth, not the youth, or of, in the household of the youth, not the youth themselves, or any of the youth's children. So if there's a family that you're serving. Categories of family critical issues, unemployment, mental health issues, physical disability, alcohol or substance abuse, insufficient income or support to the youth or incarcerated parent. RHY service connection. So services are tracked for RHY providers, just like uh, many other providers. It's really enabling projects to report the services that they provide directly to the youth that are in their project during the entry and exit date times. It's really entered for all heads of household or adults over the age of 18 that are with, served within RHY projects. Services which require repeat visits of the same kind of service are only required to enter the first service of the type. But they are really they are really encouraged to track all services provided to that youth, and they're tracked solely through service transactions in HMIS. The service connection chart here shows how what services are con corrected or collected, I should say, collected for each project type. RHY service connection category descriptions are as follows. I'm not going to read through all of these. You can see a lot of the services like community service, service learning. These are all services that are located within the drop down box as an option when you're tracking services through HMIS and service transactions. HMIS data entry for service transactions happens when you click add a service. So if you go to the service transaction section of HMIS and choose add a service, You'll get a selection of services through the initial service type. There are options through the drop down box, but the services that really matter through this data collection point are the type of RHY services that are located within that drop down box. So every time you add a specific service, make sure you're at least tracking each service type once through the client's time in your project. Um, however, you can track it more than once. Commercial sex exploitation and sex trafficking is a data element that's located in the exit information of the youth's time in your project. It's really tracking, it's really looking to assess the extent of sexual exploitation among homeless youth within our system. There's a variety of different answers for this question. We also track labor exploitation and trafficking to assess this within the youth population as well. Uh, the data collection questions are as follows. Have you ever received something in exchange for sex, like money, food, or drugs, or shelter? If yes, have you ever received anything in exchange for the sex in the past three months? So when kind of when is the last occurrence that this has happened? Has it been within the last three months? If yes, have you ever received anything in exchange for sex and how many times? So a number of months and a number of times. Have you ever have you ever been afraid to quit or leave work due to threats of violence to yourself, family, or friends? Yes or no. Ever promised work where work or payment was different than you expected? Yes or no. And if yes, 
or workplace violence threats or workplace promise difference? Have you felt coerced, forced, coerced, pressured, or tricked into continuing? And then if yes, for workplace violence threats or workplace promise difference in the last three months, how many times? Project completion status. The purpose of this data element is to identify whether the youth completed the project or exited without completion. It's only collected for heads of household and adults at project exit. A youth who is exited from a program because of their disappearance without advanced planning or notice should be noted as no exit interview completed. The response categories for project completion are as followed, completed project, youth voluntarily left or youth was expelled or otherwise involuntarily discharged from the project. Reasons why a youth would be expelled or otherwise involuntarily discharged from project would be criminal activity, destruction of property or violence, non-compliance with project rules where they refuse to participate in activities outlined in their plan, non-payment of rent or occupancy charge if that's something that happens within your project, reach maximum time allowed in the project, so maybe they aged out, project terminated, so maybe the project ends, um, prematurely as a result of the program or facility closing, unknown or disappeared, the youth was exited from the project after absent, absenting themselves without developing an exit plan or providing notification or destination. Counseling, the purpose of this data element is to identify the type and amount of counseling services received by adults or had a, and had a households. Enrolled in RHY projects, counseling per the RHY rule means the provision or guidance, support, referrals and services, including but not limited to health services, advice to runaway or otherwise homeless youth and their families, as well as youth and families when a young person is at risk of running away as appropriate to that individual youth. For each youth that receives counseling, you have to indicate the total number of sessions that happened between the project start and exit and also indicate the number of sessions planned for the youth treatment or service plan and whether the plan is in place to either start or continue counseling after project exit. Safe and appropriate exit. The purpose of this data element is to determine the number of youth who exited to safe and appropriate destinations as determined by the youth ahead of household and adults themselves and determined by the project caseworker. So there's different safe and appropriate exit destinations that are listed below um, for you to note as well. Aftercare plans are part of RHY projects. The purpose is really to extend planning and be able to connect with a youth post exit from the project. Additional services provided beyond the period of residential stay that offered continuity and support and really follow up the youth after program exit. And the aftercare plans happen from the date of project exit for a minimum of three months after. If no aftercare plans were provided, you must enter the information date as the same as the exit date and say no to aftercare was provided. You enter this in the follow-up categories within HMIS on the entry exit tab, um, as noted here in this picture. If yes, if aftercare was provided, the information date should be the date of the first provision of aftercare. And that's indicated by specific methods. So either email or social media contact, telephone, in-person, one-on-one contact, or in-person where the youth participated in a group. Uh, a record of each type of aftercare service should be made if a youth receives more than one type, but only one is required for follow-up. If you have any other questions regarding RHY data elements, please refer to the HMIS data manual for RHY projects or contact your HMIS administrator. Thank you.